G'day and welcome to this week's episode of Going Four Wheel Drive. Firstly, I want to thank everybody who have sent their best wishes to their good lady wife for a speedy recovery. Recently, she was rushed to hospital with heart failure. That was due to a virus, but thankfully, she's slowly on the mend again. On today's show, we're going to be having a product review of the Tanami Pro Pump. We've also got a rig review of an orange FJ40 with a 350 motor in it. And also, we're talking storage systems with Jim Best from Best Off-Road. That's all coming up later in the show. Now today's trip, we're going out with members of the Off-Road 80s and the Outer Limits Forums. They're tackling a track today that can only be described really as Boghole Mania! And to tell us more is the trip organiser, Brian Haynes. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. And what is this track all about, please? Oh, this one's a pretty severe boghole track. It's about 1.7 kilometres in length. It'd have about... 15 or so bog holes, about a metre, metre and a half deep. And is there water in these bog holes or mud or a combination of both? Oh, it's a combination of both. A fair bit of water. Right, and uh, you've obviously walked the track recently? Yeah, I've walked it. Uh, there'll be a fair bit of winch in today, I would say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to take a while, for sure. Right, and we've got one of the vehicles here, uh, the burnt orange uh, FJ40 of Chris. He's going to be joining us today. And uh, we've got a total of 10 vehicles. Yeah, that's right. We uh, started off with 11. One's dropped off uh, already due to head gasket problems. But uh, I'm sure they'll come along and watch anyway. We'll see how many make it through. I heard a rumour. That was a Zook that dropped out. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. It just had its <laughs> engine rebuilt as well. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> does that say a lot for the uh, mechanic? Oh, I think it says something about the driver pushing it too hard, I reckon. <laughs> well, you know him better than I do. All right, and now this track is obviously going to be taking a few hours. Well, it takes, say, three or four hours or ten hours or, or oh, what? Look, I'd, uh, I want to get through it in three, but chances are it'll probably take about eight. Eight hours? I think so. Uh, to my lovely dear wife at home who's waiting for me, <laughs> sorry, love, might be late. <laughs> Alright Brian, well thanks very much for coming on the show and uh, thanks for taking us out today, we really appreciate it. No worries. And we're really looking forward to a great day of four wheel driving, extreme hardcore. Oh it certainly will be. There's a total of 10 trucks in the convoy today and some of these bog holes, well they're more like puddles to start off with. It's going to be interesting to see if any of the vehicles turn around and go back or break down. We have a good mixture of vehicles today ranging from 80 series cruisers, 100 series, a Hilux with a Bandera front end in it, it looks great that does, and also Range Rovers, two of. It's going to be interesting to see which way they go, either through the bog holes or they turn around or break down. I reckon they'll break down being British. This is a nicely prepared Hilux, complete with Bandera front end with coil springs. Very nice unit. The convoy has reached its first obstacle. That's a pair of bog holes with an island in the middle. The lead vehicle of the convoy has got himself stuck in this hole and will be snatched out. Meanwhile, our trip leader is having to go to the other bog hole on the other side of the island. Brian, our trip leader, wasn't able to winch himself out of the bog hole, so he decided to reverse back out of it. Meanwhile, the GU tray, he's having a crack at it, and I reckon he's going to end up winching through. Our lead vehicle has had a second go at this uh, bog hole on the right-hand side, and came stuck again, now he's winching out. The GU, mind you, he's had two cracks at it, unsuccessful. Instead of winching up and out, he's reversing out of the bog hole as well. Oh, yeah. 
The 100 series has had a few goes at getting out of the bog hole by himself and has had to winch it as a last resort. But as you can see, he's about to lift the wheel and just about to collect the tree as well, putting a little dent in his rear door. Left hand down, mate. It's the only way he's going to get out of there, so. Oh, maybe not. Each vehicle coming through this bog hole will have to winch no matter what. Brian's not happy with not being able to get through the bog hole on the other side and decides to give this one a go, but unfortunately he's debeated a tyre and now will be winched out. Oh, I love the sound of that Chev V8 motor. Oh, it's beautiful. You have to give him a snatch. A second snatch for Brian. We'll get him out of the bog hole so he can pull over on the side of the track and replace the tyre with his spear. Whoa. Oh, that was lucky. The hook and bull bar had just given way and the snatch strap just flew straight off the top of the hook. With the spare wheel now fitted, the convoy starts heading up the track, going through a few little puddles uh, towards more aggressive type of bog hole. Even with 37s on the vehicle, it's struggling to get out of the bog hole under its own steam. Coming up next, we talk to Jim Best about storage systems for your vehicle. That's on Going 4 Wheel Drive. Best Off-Road can solve your storage needs from standard two-drawer units, double stackers with fridge slides or custom-built jobs. Best Off-Road affordable storage solutions. Log on to the website bestoffroad.net.au and solve your storage needs today. For serious off-road drivers, the Wrangler MTR offers outstanding performance in extreme conditions. Featuring an aggressive design for additional traction and grip, you'll be riding one of the toughest off-road four-wheel drive tyres that money can buy. Goodyear Wrangler MTR, a revolution ahead. Avenger 4x4 accessories. If you need a new canopy, check out Avenger's range, they'll have one for you. From nudge bars, side steps and tons of stainless steel accessories, including their new Mako TDS rope friendly line of winches. Avenger 4x4 accessories. Today we're going to be talking about storage systems and with me is Jim Best from Best Off-Road. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ian. Tell us about storage systems. What types are there and uh, how do they actually fit and how do they work? Ian, the storage system is about increasing your storage within your vehicle. Using the whole space by putting a set of drawers in, giving you a false floor, allowing you to use this space to maybe mount a fridge, put your swag in, put all your gear. It then gives you all this sort of space below for things like your compressor. It's important to have dividers in the drawers so you can break the drawers up into various compartments, either an entire long drawer or various sections, so you can fit the various sized bits and pieces that you may want to put in there. It's important they meet ADRs and they bolt to the floor of the vehicle very securely. Good systems are designed to match with the mounting holes in a vehicle, so there's no need to drill, thus making it very easy to get in and out. And the systems should be very robustly built. They need to be on a good roller bearing system so that there's no movement or shake. No lateral movement, no up and down. The car should move before the drawers do. They should roll in nice and snug. They should have a good locking system to keep your valuables away from any miscreants. Right, and the drawers, they can be custom made to suit the person's requirements Indeed. as well as vehicle's requirements? Yep. A good storage system will suit the vehicle. It will match between the wheel arches and go from front to back to maximise your space. After all, that's what it's about, to increase your storage. Right. I guess also fridge slides are um, an optional extra, of course. Naturally. And also, I've seen a couple around, but they've got the bar fridge 
set up in them as well. Yeah, they can be done a number of ways, Ian. Two drawers on top of each other here with a false floor across the top. And on the other side can be a fridge on a conventional fridge slide or even with a built-in bar fridge. A 12 volt Waco or Engel make the uh, excellent fridges so that you've got access at your height rather than leaning in. As I said, a good system can be custom built to suit the vehicle and the customer's needs. Right. Well, Jim, thank you very much for that. And uh, hopefully that gives everybody a good idea on storage systems. And also they can be purchased from manufacturers and also from uh, good retailers. Jim, yes. thanks very much for being on the show. Thanks, Ian. You're welcome. I have with me today Chris and his beloved FJ40. It's got a 350 motor in it. It's a beautiful burnt orange colour. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. No uh, worries. Now, what have you done to the vehicle? Uh, I've had it modified a bit. We put a 357 in it. Um, it's got an auto. Runs three seven diffs. Uh, it's got a locker in the front of it. Uh, limited slip diff in the back of it. Um, there's 60 series leaves under it. The front are reverse. The shackles at the back of the front leaves. Um, the rear axle's further back. We put bucket seats in it. Long range tank. Um, the motor's slightly improved. Double row timing chain. Deck the, the block and the heads for a bit more compression. And uh, a couple of creature comforts, you know. Um, carpet and what have you. Nice little stereo. And uh, that's about it, really, yeah. And Chris, funny looking airbox. Looks more like a bread box there. Yeah, it does a bit. It does a bit. We, um, I made it up with a friend of mine, Hayden. Gave me a lot of help on that. Uh, it was to house a big six inch air cleaner. Get a lot of airflow into it. I find they run a lot better with a lot of airflow into them. A couple of things were a little bit not stock, I suppose. The oil cooler was was put in to uh, help cool it down a bit. That's an aftermarket one there, by the look of it. Yep, yep. It's a big, big core derailly oil cooler. They often use them in race cars and slight performance use, I suppose, where they've got to cool it down a bit quicker. But uh, we got 60 mil extra put in the um, radiator to build that up a little bit, thanks to. Um, Aussie Desert Coolers, and uh, we just put a thermo fan in the cowling, in the um, in the standard cowling. Got a uh, a big electric Duraly thermo fan and put that in there. Now, Chris, with the suspension, what have you done there, please? Well, we had uh, Ken Dixon at Eureka Off Road fabricate up these big plates that you can see here. Yep. It turns the um, leaves around the other way, puts the shackle at the back, and um, helps correct the way the axle probably should travel. It, um, it doesn't slap as much. Once again, Ken Dixon's work, a couple of little modifications for the way I wanted it. I wanted the jerry can holder in it and the reverse lights. And uh, yeah, like, Those reverse lights look almost like uh, halogen lights from a house, 12 volt lights. 12 volt down lights, well picked Ian. And also we've got the uh, LED lights here. Would swear by the LEDs now, we'll never go back to globes. They, um, doesn't matter how much you jet wash them. They come back good every time. The uh, 60 series axle, as you can see, the uh, shockers are mounted in front of the rear axle, whereas standard there on the rear side of the rear axle. The, uh, the axle is 40 or 50 odd mil back this way. I've used an old style axle from an old, older Land Cruiser I had lying around, and I only used it because I'd already put a 3 7 ratio and new bearings in it, and I thought I might just get my money's worth before I upgrade to a 60 series. Beautiful colour of burnt orange again, he's got the taco, he's got the standard instrument cluster, uh, a couple of switches, uh, this switch over here Chris. Uh, thermo fan. Thermo fan and temp gauge, CD player and just your normal uh, switches over there. Uh, so it's a very basic sort of dashboard. Homemade console here and uh, that has a flip up lid like so and UHF radio down here and a homemade uh, console cover for the shifter. Uh, it's got a fluoro light and it's got an extension speaker as well. Any other mods inside that I've missed, Chris? Pretty only the roll bar. Oh, yes. Had that made up how I wanted it to uh, suit my uh, tall height. And uh, the fuel tank, big one piece aluminium fuel tank under the seats. And that's what the uh, seats are mounted over? Yep, yep, that's right. Yep. Um, and these are custom mounts? Yeah, custom mounts. Yep. Yeah, everything, everything past the engineers. It's all engineered how you see it, except for the tyres. Well, mate, you've done a really good job with the truck. Thanks. It's come up a treat, real treat. Oh, Chris is really putting on a great show for us with the FJ. 
Unfortunately though, he's got some funny noises coming from the engine area. I think he may have done a uh, engine mount from the sounds of it. Chris has just told us he has done an engine mount and he won't be doing the track any further. So he's done a U-turn along with four other vehicles. So half the convoy is now retired from the uh, well, challenge if you like. And Brian's just getting himself stuck here and we'll have to winch out of this little bog hole here. Best Off-Road can solve your storage needs from standard two-drawer units, double stackers with fridge slides or custom-built jobs. Best Off-Road, affordable storage solutions. Log on to the website bestoffroad.net.au and solve your storage needs today. For serious off-road drivers, the Wrangler MTR offers outstanding performance in extreme conditions. Featuring an aggressive design for additional traction and grip, you'll be riding one of the toughest off-road four-wheel drive tyres that money can buy. Goodyear Wrangler MTR, a revolution ahead. Avenger 4 before accessories. If you need a new canopy, check out Avenger's range. They'll have one for you. From nudge bars, side steps and tons of stainless steel accessories, including their new Mako TDS rope friendly line of winches. Avenger 4 before accessories. You know, I thought the rangies would have turned tail by now or failed, but no, they're still going strong and yeah. Oh, very nice red net. Straight through without any trouble at all, unlike Brian. I wonder what Paulie can do. If he can get through, great. He's running Symex. Yep, and through he goes. Three vehicles are going to complete this track. Uh, the 80 series here and the two ranges of Redneck and Paulie, who we haven't seen much of yet. However, our trip leader Brian and another vehicle have decided to turn tail and head out as well. They're going to swing around the main road and meet us back at the end of the track. After a promising start, coming to a grinding halt in the bog hole with, uh, well, water and mud like wet cement. Slowly, inch by inch, winching his way out of here. Yeah, it'll be a long little winch, this one. That's Cam. He's been uh, instrumental today in helping the guys hook up their winches so they can uh, get themselves out of little spots here and there. Oh, no wonder the car's backfiring and carrying on like a pork chop. Oh, jeez, look at that mud. That is awesome. The 80 series and Redneck have already come through this part of the gully. And Paulie's having a crack at it again. He's had about two goes already. I think he'll end up being snatched out of here. But uh, Redneck's got a few little problems with his car at the moment. It's not running at all well. Probably all that mud. Uh, getting the electrics and stuffing it right up. All we can say is one rangy towing another one and an 80 series were the only vehicles to finish this track under their own steam. 
Well done, boys. Great trip. On a long trip through the outback or the Victorian high country, chances are you'll have to do a fuel top up with a jerry can. Why am I busting my back? Why aren't you using the ten of my pump that I bought? What ten of my pump? This one. How long have you had I, that? It's been in the toolbox for, oh, since I've had it. Why I've even shown it to you. Why didn't you tell me that five minutes ago and save my back? Well, you've been in the toolbox a few times. I thought you would have seen it. Good one, Ian. It certainly is, Cheryl. The Tanami Pro Pump eliminates your strain back by locking onto the spout in the same way as the cap does. There are no moving parts internally and it has a seal, clamp, air intake valve and also a pressure relief valve. The body is also powder coated to resist corrosion. The Tanami Pump is also environmentally friendly as it doesn't leak to the ground like standard jerry can pourers do. To get the flow going on your Tanami Pump just connect up your 12 volt compressor like so, and then you can start pumping. No internal moving parts, it operates with an air pressure as low as 2 psi to 5 psi, air inlet is a Schrader valve or tyre valve, and safety has a pressure relief valve. It also has a 10 mm feeder pipe with 2 meter fuel grade hose. The Tunamai Pro Pump is a fantastic item. It works extremely well, it's quick and easy with an air compressor, and what's more, you can use even a bike pump with it. It's just a normal everyday bike pump, or even a foot pump to pump up your lilos. Just low pressure it requires, it's fantastic. Uh, it takes a back braking strain out of putting fuel back into your car from a jerry can on a long trip. Nice and easy to use, as I said. It's made simply, there's no internal moving parts. That's a great little item. Out of 10, I give this a 9.5, and, and what's more, it's environmentally friendly. Unlike the normal pourers, it leaks fuel onto the ground. The Tenemai Pro pump doesn't. It lets it all go into the fuel tank where it's supposed to go. It's a great item. For more information, log on to the Going Four Wheel Drive website. All the details are up there for it. Gee, it's been a hard day today. We're exhausted. It's been great. We've had a lot of fun. And everybody on the trip has had a lot of fun too. Even the guys who, well, 10 cars started. Halfway along, five decided to turn around. The FJ40 had a broken engine mount, so he had no choice. But then three quarters of the way along, the going got tough. The trip leader, Brian, he decided to turn tail along with somebody else, which left three vehicles. Two rangies, one was redneck, the other one poorly, and also a cruiser. They did the rest of the track, well, in fashions. It was quite comical at times, it was great. The amount of mud in the engine bays and under the bonnets, incredible. Winches died, batteries went flat. In fact, Paulie had to be towed out by Redneck. And uh, the cruiser, well, he just got out on his own. So, in all honesty, two vehicles actually finished the track under their own power. Paulie, as I said, he had to be towed out. Never mind, Paulie, you'll be right. It was a fantastic day, and, uh, yeah, it's been great. We've enjoyed it. Thanks to the guys of the forums. It's been a wonderful time. Now, we've also got the Tanami Pro Pump competition running at the moment. And for your chance to get a, a pump for a jerry can, log onto the website and enter the comp. Answer five questions, they're very simple, and put your entry in for your chance to win one of these fantastic Tanami Pro Pumps. It'll stop you busting your back every time you have to do a top up out in the bush. They're great. All right, now if you need any more info, log onto the website, goingforwarddrive.com, and you can get more details there. But for now though, you have a great week and we'll catch you on the tracks. <laughs>